will be running tonight's meeting. We are your volunteer representatives appointed by our county council person or county executive and entrusted to monitor renovations and additions to our Baltimore County historic resources. We review and approve nominations to the Baltimore County preliminary landmarks list and comment on national register nominations. Additionally, we are charged with evaluating submissions to the Baltimore County Historic Tax Credit Program that encourages the appropriate maintenance and renovation of designated historic properties. Would the commissioners please introduce themselves by name and county council district or representation? We can go in order listed on the PowerPoint screen. Lily Mundroff, District 1. Is Chris here? I don't see Chris. No, no. We do not have both of the Chris's are not here. Okay. Wendy MacGyver, District 3. Daniel Dean, District 5. Ray Scott, Phoebe. Phoebe Evans Latosha, executive appointment. Amy Ferguson, executive appointment. Scott Olopka, planning board uh, representative. Ed Hoard, executive appointment. I don't see Vince, so Tom. Chris Parts, executive appointment. Oh, Chris is oh, here. And, and good, glad to have you, Chris and Tom. Tom, I think you're muted. Um, we'll come back to you. The Landmarks Preservation Commission. Oh, but first, we've got to stand and do the Pledge of Allegiance. Excuse me. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic of Pakistan. One nation. Liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Now I can say the Landmarks Preservation Commission operates under the authority standards and requirements of Title VII, Article 32 of the Baltimore County Code. We refer to the United States Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation as administered by the National Park Service. This is the accepted national standard for historic preservation projects. Our own Baltimore County Historic Preservation Design Guidelines directly reference and incorporate the Secretary of the Interior Standards for Rehabilitation. We have important preservation issues to discuss and debate at each meeting. If you would like to make comments, please limit your comments to the specific application or proposal submission being reviewed. We ask for your assistance and understanding so that the discussions do not digress. As an additional comment, we can all agree that historic preservation is an important aspect of the quality of life and place that makes Baltimore County unique. As a commission, we seek to recommend significant buildings and places for landmark consideration to the County Council for their final vote. As commissioners, we serve on the commission due to our expertise, interest, and passion for historic buildings and places and review submissions based solely on their merit. While we may disagree in discussion and voting, we continue to be a collegial body that respects each other personally and professionally. Um, staff reminders. Um, just some staff reminders for offering testimony to those um, members of the public had an opportunity to either submit written testimony that would be distributed to the commission prior to the meeting. They also had an opportunity to register to speak here tonight. Um, if they did so, uh, staff will announce announce those um, who registered uh, at the appropriate time when their agenda item is up. We'll announce and unmute them. Owners and applicants and project representatives uh, do not have to register to speak. They get an, um, as much time as they, I, they'd like to address the commission. Um, also, just a reminder that the information in this um, presentation is just a summary. Um, L the LPC does receive all the applications, all the applications and the materials that were submitted within one week prior to the meeting in order to pre prepare for tonight. So the information in this um, presentation is just uh, a summary and just to keep the meeting moving in an organized fashion. Thank you. 
Any um, changes to, to, to today's agenda? No changes. Okay, thank you. And minutes of the September 12th meeting, I trust everybody's had a chance to review them. Um, any additions or corrections we need to consider? Hearing none, can I get a motion to approve them? Move that we approve those. <clears throat> second. I'll second. Thank you. Um, we can do a voice vote for this. All in favor? Aye. 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 And any opposed? Hearing none, they are approved. Thank you. And then Jessica, do you want to talk about the consent agenda items? Yeah, we have two uh, items on the consent agenda. The first is agenda item number four, the Black Clark property at 110 Dunkirk Road in Towson County Council District number six. This is a contributing resource within the Rogers Forge National Register Historic District, and the applicants are seeking part two approval for a slate roof uh, repair and in-kind replacements. The second is agenda item number five for the O'Connor property at 210 Melochthon Avenue in Lutherville County Council District number three. This is a non-contributing resource within the Lutherville County Historic District, and the applicants have proposed the construction of a 10 by 12 uh, prefabricated shed in the rear yard. Um, and the commission did receive a letter of support from the Lutherville um, Historic Advisory Committee for this project. And that's it for the consent agenda. Good. Commissioners, are, are we content with um, the consent agenda? Does anybody want to ask that either property be removed from it for more, more consideration? Hearing none, may I have a motion to approve the consent agenda items? So moved. Thank you. And a second? Second. Thank you. And um, I think we should do roll call vote, please. Great. Can we have Lily, please? Yes. Wendy? Yes. Dan? Yes. Phoebe? Yes. Jamie? Yes. Scott? Yes. Ed? Yes. Uh, Chris Parts? Yes. Tom? Yes. Great, thank you. And John, please. And Vince is here. Oh, and Vince. And Vince. Sorry, hey, Vince. Vince. <laughs> I miss you there. Yeah, okay. we, did you hear the consent agenda? Yes, I did. Great, yeah. perfect. Can I have your vote, please, Vince? Yes. Great, thank you so much. Thanks for sneaking in. We are glad you joined us, Vince. Thank you. Okay. And then Thank item you. number six, you want to lead us into that, Jessica, as well? Yep. So we have the Co Wang Trust property at 10899 York Road in Cockeysville, County Council District number three. This is final landmarks number 24, the Cocky Homestead. And the applicant is uh, requesting to make various exterior repairs, in-kind replacements, and to construct um, a side and rear addition. So for some background, the property was locally designated as final landmark number 24, the Cocky Homestead, through Council Bill number 101-78 in 1978. The structure is a five by two bay stone dwelling with a gable roof. The designation does not include a historic environmental setting. The applicants proposed to construct a side, north, and rear east addition in order to accommodate future office space. The primary structure raises approximately 30 feet above grade, and the proposed additions will sit approximately 28 feet above grade. The existing main house roof is a faux slate material. The applicants proposed to replace the existing roof with natural Del Carmen slate shingles. The roofs of the new additions will be differentiated from the primary structure with standing seam copper roofs. The applicant also proposes to make several repairs and in-kind replacements to the existing stone dwelling. Stone will be repointed as necessary with ecologic lime mortar and existing lap siding will be replaced in kind. Existing shutters will be replaced in kind with timberland panel shutters and the existing windows will remain. So for the side addition located on the north elevation, will join the historic rear L addition of the primary structure and connect to and incorporate the existing stone accessory, accessory structure, uh, which is currently used as a garage. 
using the existing patio between the house and the garage as its a foundation. It will be considerably set back from the primary facade of the main block and have a lower roof line. It will be two stories tall and have hardy fiber cement siding on the first floor entry and hardy fiber cement board and batten with a four inch exposure will be used on the second story. The windows will be a six over six style to match the main dwelling. For the rear addition on the west elevation, will be constructed above the existing rear single story sunroom and will not include any changes to existing rear foundation. The swimming pool in the rear yard will be filled and graded. The rear addition will be accessed from an entry on the second level, which will be at grade due to the natural slope of the rear yard. The addition will have a copper standing seam roof, traditional double hung windows to match the existing. The addition will be clad in hardy fiber cement siding to match, match the side addition and additional project and product and material details can be found in the application materials. Staff appreciates the well designed and thought out plans of the addition. The side and rear arts alterations meet our guidelines for addition. They both are appropriately located and have appropriate material and product choices. The side addition is set back from the front building line and is attached to a rear L addition and incorporates the stone and foundations of the existing garage. Staff asked the commission to review the proposal and to then approve or modify accordingly. And applicable guidelines are listed in the presentation. Good. Thank you so much, Jessica. Do, do we have um, anybody who represents the property or the owners with us? Yeah, let me see if we have um, the project representative on. All right, uh, Mr. Dave Smith, uh, I have you unmuted if there's anything you'd like to um, say to the commission. I'm sorry, Jessica, you, you cut out there for a minute, but can you hear me? Oh, yeah, yeah, I was just letting you know that we have you unmuted if you'd like to address the commission. Uh, yeah, no, I, um, you know, certainly would love to answer any questions on the application. Um, you know, it's a beautiful old property that we're looking, we'd love to, you know, bring back to life, so to speak. It's, it's kind of been let go, so to speak, and it needs a lot of um, repair work and a lot of, you know, maintenance that's gone deferred. And, and so we'd love to, you know, essentially make it our new office space where the the main home has really remained intact and it's kind of a, a show house um, where we can, you know, kind of show, you know, the, the historic nature of the home um, for clients. And then, you know, the additions would serve as just office uh, desk space. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Smith. I appreciate that. Commissioners, any questions, comments, um, discussion? I had one question from the original um, historic designation. I know, you know, it's, it's quite old and um, it doesn't include the uh, environmental setting. Was the garage included in the original designation? No, no. Okay. No, it was not. Yes. Any other comments or questions? I think it looks good. I think it's uh, well done and it's something it's. I think using real slate and copper standing seam is a. Is a great uh, long lasting uh, maintenance to this building. It's a significant building. I think that yes. the package was <clears throat> was thorough, well explained and um, I, I, in my opinion, it complies with our guidelines. <clears throat> I always appreciate those well done approach and applications. It's a big help to all of us. Anything else, commissioners? Um, I do have a question. Um, is uh, is this coming in for historic tax credits or is it just um, as a review because it's a landmark? Just as a review because it's a landmark. Okay. Thank you. Hearing no further questions or comments, may we have a motion to approve? I would approve we, uh, or I would move that we approve the, the project uh, as submitted. 
Thank you, Chris. A second. I'll second it. Thank you, Ed. Um, and then I um, roll call vote, Jessica. Have Lily, please. Yes. Wendy. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Wendy. Uh, Dan, please. Yes. Phoebe. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Scott. Yes. Ed. Yes. Chris. Yes. Tom. Yes. Vince. Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Great. Thank you. And John, please. Yes. Yes. Great. Thank you. And then um, we'll move on to our to another review of the Smith property. Number yep. seven. There you go. Um, so we're familiar with the Smith property at 502 Upland Road at Suburb Park, County Council District Number Two. This is a non-contributing resource within the Suburb Park County Historic District, and the applicants have uh, returned for uh, consideration to expand the existing rear driveway uh, or to add a permeable street front parking pad. Uh, so again, the property at 502 Upland Road is a split level shed style dwelling constructed in 1947 and is a non-contributing structure within the Sudbrook Park County Historic District. On August 5th, 2024, preservation staff was informed of active grading along the roadway at 502 Upland Road with the presumed intent to install a new parking pad. Staff contacted the property owner with instructions to submit a historic review application for the proposed work. A code violation has not been issued. The property owner came before the commission at its September 12th, 2024 meeting and proposed to install a new six by 24 foot asphalt park parking pad along the front of the property on Upland Road. The proposed parking pad did not connect to the existing drive Driveway and would widen the street to allow for more room for street parking. The commission voted not to approve the request and asked for some more information regarding the design. Since the September meeting, staff has confirmed with the zoning regulations in regards to front yard parking. The proposed location of the parking pad is in the county's right of way and would technically require a residential access permit for its installation. Unfortunately, since the property already has a driveway, the county would not be able to issue a permit or allow a parking pad to be installed. Residential properties on county maintained roads are only allowed one access point in the county right of way. Staff shared this information with the property owner. The property owner has returned to the commission with two new proposals for additional parking. The first is the six by 24 foot street front parking pad with either a pea gravel or decorative stone or turf stone brand permeable paver insulation instead of asphalt. There's no border or retaining wall proposed in the location. The second proposal is to add an 8x8 parking area to the existing 8x12 rear parking area at the end driveway next to the garage in the rear yard. This proposal's location is not visible from the road and does not disrupt the streetscape on Upland Road. Staff asked the commission to review both options and determine if the proposal meets our design guidelines um, and which option is the most appropriate for the district as a whole. And then to um, determine if it meets our design guidelines and to approve, modify, or deny it accordingly, citing Baltimore County Historic Design Guidelines, Chapter 7, Fences and Landscape, County Code Section 32-7-405. Thank you, Jessica. Um, is the owner with us tonight? Yes, Mr. Smith, I have you unmuted if there's anything you'd like to add. Um, well, my wife was at the meeting uh, last month. And uh, in talking with Jessica, you know, she had said, uh, you know, the problems that it would, uh, I don't know, cause with uh, the county uh, roads and all of that. Um, so that's why I came up with the plan B. Uh, we came up with it of, uh, you know, expanding the back area. Um, but I still wanted to see as well if it was possible to have. Uh, you know, even if it was just gravel, decorative stone in front or a permeable uh, piece in front, all of this is uh, our daughter is disabled and she uses this house with caregivers uh, coming in and out 24 um, 7. So there's a lot of shifting of cars when people are coming in and out and sometimes just a quick drop off. So uh, to have that space in front would be ideal. 
the reason why uh, it couldn't be hooked into the driveway, if you look at the, the front of the, the house, just to the left, if you're looking at the main driveway, yeah. Uh, so if you see there, kind of where the mailbox is, just up from there, you can see, uh, yeah, you see that little uh, thing sticking out of the ground. That is the sewage line clean out. And I was told we really couldn't expand the driveway there because they'd have to dig down a little bit and, uh, you know, it would just cause problems. Um, the only other thing would be if we were proactively going to replace that sewer line, clean out, and dig up the whole front yard, and then, and still, even if there was any problem with the uh, the sewage line clean out, it would be you know part of the driveway, and that would be problematic. So that's why we couldn't connect it in there. Um, I know it's my fault because I didn't realize. Um, you know what I was wading into when we started the work, and that's on me. And I apologize, but I would like to see if there's a way to have the parking pad in back for uh, the caregivers, you know, parking who are there for you know several hours of their shift, uh, as well as uh, even just if it was gravel or the permeable pavers in front. Uh, in that spot, you can see there, so that there could be a quick drop-off area as well. Um, and with that, you know, they'd be able to put it back if, uh, you know, the house was sold, you know, whatever it can be, uh, it could be easily taken out or, um, you know, sodded over and, and made to grass again. Um, I understand that asphalt is kind of out of the question. So that's what I'm hoping you consider. Okay. So commissioners, um, you heard uh, Mr. Smith and he's requesting. The additional parking in the back and informal parking in the front with gravel. Um, any discussion or questions or thoughts on that? I have a thought. I I think the pad in the back is is perfectly acceptable. I think it could be bigger than eight by eight if you chose to won't make it wide enough for two cars. But um, I do not think that the parking pad in the front should be done. I'd like to see. The scar in the in the yard re, uh, repaired with uh, fill and a nice uh, and topsoil so it can be sodded and returned to grass. If he wanted something in the park in the front yard, I think he could come in just past the uh, clean out and do a, a, a space that was perpendicular to the driveway. That was yeah in there. I think would be I would. I'd be okay with that, but I think you'd have to come back with a plan to show us what he what he uh, proposes. That those are my thoughts. That's what I would propose. Others, anybody else have a thought on that? I'd just like to agree with Ed on that one there too. The back would be the most ideal. Bigger if you need. I would agree one hundred percent with that too. That. Uh, uh, it also just seems to uh, accommodate accessibility a little more effectively to not have to be off the street, back on the street, up the driveway. Uh, even if it's just the caregivers, it seems to be a bit circuitous to get to the to the house there. Sounds like um, we we might have a fully formed thought. Would somebody like to put it into a to a motion? I can make a motion that. Um... We approve putting a parking pad in the back. We do not approve and would like to see the front scar on the roadway repaired and brought back to the way it was with grass. And um, that would be the proposal. Um, may I amend it a little bit to say, uh, if I understood you all correctly, that a parking pad large enough to accommodate two cars in the back. Could be done if they, if they so mm -hmm. Okay. Um, is there a second to that motion? Second. Second. Thank you. Thank you. Um, roll call vote, please. Lily, please. Yes. Wendy. Yes. Dan. Yes. Phoebe. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Scott. Yes. Ed. Yes. Chris. Yes. Tom? Yes. And Vince, please? Yes. And John? Yes. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you. 
Thank you. And then on to number eight, the estate of Gail Rogers. Yes. All right, we have agenda item number eight, the estate of Gail Rogers property at 501 Bond Avenue in Ricerstown, County Council District number two. So this is final landmark number 105, the Price House or the Freeze House. And um, we are considering the ex post facto review of various exterior alterations, which is part of code enforcement correction notice number CB160086. For some background, the Price House was constructed in the late 19th century in the folk Victorian style with various cross gables remnants of Downing and Vaux cottages. The house was added to the final landmarks list in 1991 for its architecture and material integrity. The property was purchased in April 2022 by Lochman Real Estate Corp and EK Homes LLC, who made major renovations to the interior and exterior, subsequently putting the house on the market in November of 2022. As a reminder, the violation came to staff's attention from a constituent in inquiry and subsequently a correction notice was issued on November 22, 2022. But, uh, violations included work completed without the approval of the LPC and permits for that work. Work completed included the replacement of previously existing windows, enclosing several original window openings on the front side and rear elevations, alterations to the size and placement of window openings, and the replacement of the front door. The property at 501 Bond Avenue last came before the commission in January 2023 to address the issue of various exterior alterations completed without <laughs> LPC approval and without permits. The LPC denied the application, citing that the work completed did not meet our design guidelines and asked the owners to return to the commission with more details and to focus on the front of the house, returning it back to its previous state. The property was then sold to Gail Rogers in February 2023 with the active code violations. The property failed to return to the commission and a citation was issued in September of 2023. At the administrative law judge hearing, the judge issued fines and lien on the property in December of 2023. The judge's final order stated that the violators, Lochman Real Estate Corp. and EK Homes LLC were at fault and ordered that the exterior be returned to the appearance at which it existed at the time it received final landmark designation or as determined by the LPC. Since then, the new property owner, Gail Rogers, has passed away and the property is now owned by her estate and cannot be sold until the code issues are satisfied. Mrs. Rogers' daughter, Leslie Minchu, is serving as the estate administrator and has submitted an application to address the violations made by the previous owners. The alterations focus on the front elevation, as it is the most visible and prominent elevation. The proposal includes returning several architectural features that were, were removed from the house. The proposal does not address the front door replacements and alterations to the windows. The window alterations would impact several interior issues. The proposed work items are as followed. Number one, sunbursts uh, at the attic story gables. These features do not currently exist. They were removed by a previous owner for restoration and were never returned. The applicant proposes to return the sunburst detail to the gables ends and match as closely possible using photographs that were provided by staff to match. Their dimensions would be 58 inches on each side made from plywood and painted. Two, porch brackets. To recreate as closely as possible, lay slight corner and center brackets and install on front porch, front and side elevations. There will be 16 corner brackets and nine center brackets. The corner bracket dimensions are 16 and three quarters by 14 and a half by 12 inches and two and three quarters wide. The center bracket bracket dimensions will be 14 inches long and six inches high at deepest point. Both will be made from Spanish cedar and painted. Three, the attic store gable and siding. Uh, applicant requests to move the current vinyl and return cedar shingle back to the space to match existing house, and it will be painted to match. And finally, the shutters. Per the photos from 2016, the windows of the front facade of the house had shutters. Uh, this is except for the middle window on the third floor. This feature no longer exists. The applicant has requested to return the shutters to the front elevation. Full louver uh, wooden sh shutters at all windows of front facade except the middle window on the third floor. Dimensions would be 60, uh, 
inches tall by 19.5 inches wide, and all windows are 60 by 30 inches. Uh, and shutters will be pine. Shutters will be hung on historically appropriate functional hinges and held open with appropriate hardware. Staff notes that all of the proposed items do meet our design guidelines and are appropriate to return to the house. Staff asked the commission to review the items and current situation regarding the property and to determine if the proposed items are enough to satisfy the code violation. Staff would also like to make sure that Ms. Minshew please disclose to any potential buyers of the house's landmark status. Uh, so we are citing Baltimore County Historic Design Guidelines, Chapter 4, Exterior Walls and Foundations, County Code Section 32-7-405. Thank you. Thanks, Jessica. And is the owner with us? Is Ms. Minshew with us? We do. Yes, Ms. Minshew, I have you uh, unmuted. I'm here. Okay. Is there anything you'd like to add to, to that lead-in? Uh, just that I'm available to an hopefully answer any questions you might have. Good. Thank you. We appreciate you being with us. Um, commissioners, questions, thoughts? Um, this and is really. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Ed. I'll... Okay. I I think the I agree with the legislature with the law judge who made their ruling that this should be restored to the to the state that it was in before it was really sort of butchered in my view. Uh, can we go back to the other the shot that shows the existing with the previous? Now go more. There we go. I mean, when I look at this, it was so elegant and you know tall portion windows that that actually aligned that weren't just a couple of feet off that makes it look like mistakes on the you know the top window is is much shorter and needs to be well bottom line is the windows should match what's there on this facade this is the landmark building we're not asking anything else for the rest of the whole rest of the facades that have been altered and and i in my view just destroyed the look of this wonderful Victorian building. I mean, it's really pretty amazing. And we don't see many of them. And um, it's, I, I think it needs to be brought back to where it was. They need to match it. And I think they need to come back with drawings that really show what this means. I don't, I'm not convinced of an plywood piece put up there uh, is going to be match the proportions and the look of what's there now. So I'd like to see drawings of what they're doing and show us that they're actually putting back the double windows with a wider board in the middle and that they have the same proportion that was existing originally. So I think somebody that knows what they're doing needs to draw this so it's we can be convinced that it's really following, aligning the windows, placing the windows above the porch and making them the same proportions they are now. This is one of our landmark buildings. We're not asking for much, but I think if we're gonna bring it back and do what the law judge asked us asked to be done, which is to restore it to his original look, that's what you need to do. That'd be my suggestion. But I'll Thank you. I'll Thank, you. Thank you, Ed. Lily, did you have something to add? Um, yes, yeah, so um, I, I, I thought that um, I appreciate the the intent to restore um, some of the details, um, but I agree with Ed that the alignment of the windows and the size is crucial to you know go, returning it to the original. So I think though um, if we're asking them to come back, given that there might be. I think if we don't have plans to determine whether or not the some windows can be restored, I mean, assuming there are walls or something that does not allow the windows to go back. Um, so we need to see those plans and um, I think as much as possible, go back to the symmetry and the alignment of the windows, the size and the alignment of those two gables and the windows um, on those gables is very important. And then up, um, the front door also getting back to that front door with the two side lights and the transom above. Because um, you have, I, mean, I don't know if like the, the, the stair on the porch has been removed, the, the, the steps. 
are off, but but at least to get the door back to what it was. And um, I don't know if there's an opportunity to, you know, if there isn't a window, um, if you can have the false shutters in the center of that third window, I don't know, but just kind of re returning it back to the original as far as the window openings and the door. Thank you, Lily. Um, Chris, um, have you had some thoughts you wanted to add to? Did I see your... Um... I, um, yeah, I, I'm just in, in, in agreement on, you know, on, uh, I, um, unfortunate circumstances, but I think that we're trying to, um, uh, I, I think on this one facade, I think adjustments need to be made to, to bring that, that facade to, um, to an appropriate character, similar to what, what was there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and, I would, I would add the steps, um, I think really should be realigned back to where they were. Where they were. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, go ahead, Vince. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Lily brought up an interesting point and interesting point about the steps because I was going to ask, shouldn't that be a part of the, um, uh, bringing it back to its original look? So, so what, I, what I'm hearing, um, from everyone is that we need to have this worked at, worked and looked at by a restoration architect, perhaps, who could see what the difficulties and consequences would be of trying to put it back to, to the way it looked and also come up with a comprehensive plan as Ed suggested with drawings um, for our review. Um, is that the sense of the, what I hear everybody saying? Yes, yeah. I would like that. This is Wendy. I agree with Ed. I mean, this is a gem and they've, I don't know what the purpose was, but they've removed all the <laughs> character of, from the house. <laughs> so it was a good term. Yeah. Yeah. So, so maybe we have that in a, in a motion. Yeah. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Scott. I, I, I just have a question. Who's who's liable to pay for this? The current owner or the group that bought the house and made the changes? I can answer that for you because I've had extensive discussions with my lawyer about it. The estate is liable. Okay, but I, I sort of figured that was the case. And that's, yeah, because code uh, violations, unfortunately, stay with the property. It doesn't mm -hmm. stay with the person that makes the violation. That's why when it was sold, it made this a more difficult. But it case. should be pointed out: she, the property was bought with the code violations mm -hmm. outstanding, Correct. so it was in, in front of the the purchaser. Tom, you had a question. Yeah, you know, all right. I just made the comment that I think we need, rather than coming in saying, "Well, how can we maybe." adjust what's there now to look a little more like what it used to be. We have very good documentation of what it looked like. And, and really that needs to be yeah. the basis of any redesign. And I would suggest they need to come back and say why they cannot achieve what it looks like in that in those that existing documentation there. It's sort of just flipping the script rather than sort of saying, hey, can you modify it a bit to say fundamentally what can you not achieve to make it look like you know those 2016 2017 photographs because this is rough on a lot of different levels yeah okay so could i ask the commission members a question regarding the timing um obviously the owners that the estate purchased the house from did not own it in 2016 and 2017 and there had been pretty substantial alterations made to it when the owners that the estate purchased it from bought it, for example, the vinyl siding, uh, the windows, many of them had been removed as had the front door. And so what I'm hearing is that you want it returned to a condition it had even prior to the owners that we purchased it from. So, yes. so, so what we, we didn't, the, the men, the, the flippers uh, for mm -hmm. this, in this case, th they didn't provide us with any photographs of what the house was um, at the time of their purchase, which made it difficult for the commission to, you know, if, well, you, you can you know, see understand the that the windows are boarded um, up in the 2016 picture. Yes, um, I, I've, 
we realize that but again without those lack of, of photos it made it a, a little bit um difficult for the commission to review to see what was actually there um i mean you can see what was there um and i also know that in the final order from the judge they mentioned uh one of these i forget which year of photo in their or final order um as well so these are the only like complete photographs of what we have but there's not really any question that the vinyl siding was not done by the flippers. Is that correct? No, no, it was not. The vinyl siding was actually approved by the commission. Um, so I'm the assuming owner. that the top windows were altered prior to that as well, since the siding is around. No, the vinyl siding was, um, she had put it, put the vinyl. So if you look at the bottom photo on the screen that's from 2017, she had put the vinyl windows there with the arched. With opening. the arched windows. Yes. Okay. So obviously they had to fill in some of that final siding because these um the new windows are shorter. Okay. Got it. I would like to point out to the commission that what our task is is to protect the building. Our, it's a this is a landmark, which is a big deal in the county. It's not an easy thing to get a building landmarked. And when it's landmarked, it falls on us to protect it. We're, I, I feel horribly for the person who bought this, but our job is to protect the building. And I think we need, I, I mean, I wouldn't say, I don't care what happens inside, but I think they need to find a way to modify what's happened inside so that they can restore this building to the look that it had. So I, I that's our charge. I think that's what we need to do as stewards of this, of the county's Landmark building, which there aren't that many of, and and we know how difficult and how long it is to get a thing, a building in, uh, to get it registered as a landmark in Baltimore County. So I think we need to take care of it. I agree with that. Our charge is the building. So we seem to be in agreement on it. Would somebody like to put it into a motion? I'll make a motion. Um, feel free to modify it as I go. Um, I the building should be restored to the look and the, on these photographs that are on the left of the screen, and um, with the with the window proportions and sizes, the, the parts that are missing, the sunburst at the top, the detail on the porch, the, where the stairs happen on the porch. The windows inside the porch that need to go back. I think it needs, we're only asking for one facade, but that one facade should go back to the way that it looked in on these two photographs on the slide. Um, front door. Uh, uh, front, yeah, all the way opening, the front door, those two other windows in the porch that yeah. all needs to happen on this front facade. Um, <laughs> Phoebe, go ahead. Phoebe. Yeah, just in terms of what we have before us, wouldn't what we would need to be making a motion for would be to not approve. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Uh, so, what well, what well, I, I hear what you're saying, Ed, and so okay. most they need of to that, come back to us for that. Yeah. Most of that comes as advisory um, yeah. after we make a motion to deny. Okay. So, so it would be a motion to deny with the advice that we have talked about in discussion that will then be passed along through Caitlin and Jessica to Ms. Minshew as she, she works to do corrective actions. So Phoebe, do you wanna make that motion? Um, sure, uh, uh, basically repeating what you said. So I, I move that we deny the, um, the, the proposed um, changes, work orders, work items and um, instead advise the owner to come back to us with more details uh, to restore the property to what it was um, before these changes were made. Thank you, is there a second? I'll second, this is Wendy. Thank you, Wendy. And then a roll call motion. Roll Lily, call vote please. Um, I'm approving Phoebe's Right? Is that yes, yes means yes. no, we are yes. not approving the, yes. the work. Yes, a <laughs> yes. yes denies it. Exactly. Yes. The yes vote okay. denies it. Okay, uh, Wendy, please. I vote yes, I guess, to denying it. <laughs> yes, that's right. Okay. Dan? Yes to deny. 
Okay. Phoebe. Yes. Jamie. Yes. Scott. Yes. Ed. Yes. Chris. Yes. Tom. Yes. Vince. Vince, are you unmuted? It looks like he got knocked off. I don't okay. see him anymore. Okay. Well, we, we still have a quorum, um, so we'll continue to uh, wrap it up with uh, John, please. Yes. Great. Thank you. And uh, Ms. Minshew, just um, would do you have any questions until um, Caitlin and I get in touch with you tomorrow or? No, not um, at all. Thank you for the time okay. and your consideration. Great. Thank you, Ms. Minshew. All right, folks. So we have a couple um, that were reviewed for historic tax credit, right? Yep, we have the Fawcett property at 9 Magruder Avenue in Catonsville. It says a contributing resource within the central Catonsville and Summit National Register Historic District. And the applicants received part two approval for exterior painting, front porch repairs, and replacements. Uh, they're in County Council District number one. And we had the Palmer property at 606 Sudbrook Road in Towson. Says a contributing resource which within the Ainsley National Register Historic District. And they received part two approval for the replacement of a water heater, boiler, and a front entry storm door. Uh, they're in County Council District number six. Then we had the Ham property at 1265 6 Manor Road in Glen Arm. This was final landmark number 149, the Hunt Schmidt House in setting. And the applicants received part two approval for exterior painting and a boiler replacement. Uh, they're in County Council District number three. And finally, we had the Marshall property at 125 Rosewood Avenue in Catonsville. This is a contributing resource within the old Catonsville National Register Historic District. And the applicants received part two um, amendment approval for an asphalt roof replacement. And they are within County Council District number one. And that is all from us. That is all from, from us. So reminder that our next and last meeting of the year is November 14th, save the date. It'll be a big party afterwards, of course, as always at the end of the year. So you don't <laughs> want to miss that. Um, thank you all for being with us. Anything else that I need to add, Caitlin or Jessica? Nope. That's it. Good. Then may we have a motion to adjourn? Move we adjourn. I have a question. I'm sorry. Um, um, you followed up, um, uh, Caitlin, with uh, the visit from the commissioners about that other property, but I just wanted to see where, what's next for that, or or is it been approved, or what's the step? No, I, the project hasn't been approved. Uh, we sh shared the the report, the technical com committee's report, uh, with the property owners. I have not heard back from them from those comments. Um, so they would still have to come back um, to the commission or with another proposal on that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Good. So we have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Thank you. Thank you. And then voice vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 And it carries. Thank you so much. We appreciate it as always. See you next Thank time. You. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.